Alien Resurrection by Jean-Pierre Jeunet, horrified the fans of the franchise, and no, not in a good way. And although the same goes for the final monster, aka the newborn, it was a novel concept. Never before was a hybrid imagined in the Alien franchise, and it did pave the way for more hybrids and similar monsters, including the offspring from Alien Romulus. I will not waste a lot of time building a long intro, so yeah, in this video we will explore the anatomy of the newborn from Alien Resurrection, a one-of-a-kind monster that will be remembered for times to come, for reasons both good and bad. But, before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who or what is the newborn? Well, the newborn was a fascinating piece of work, at least that's true if you consider the time it was brought to life. It or he, what should I use? I mean, it is, after all, a humanoid xenomorph. Um, let's just go with it. So yeah, the creature was basically the result of years of DNA splicing done by the scientists of the United Systems military. In the previous Alien movie, that is Alien 3, Ripley gets impregnated with a queen xenomorph chestburster. The company guys, including a bishop lookalike, arrive and beg Ripley to let them extract the embryo, but she refuses and sacrifices herself in order to kill the Queen Xenomorph embryo. However, 200 years later, USM scientists managed to make a clone of Ripley called Ripley 8. Interestingly, the Xenomorph Queen's DNA and Ripley's DNA had been spliced with each other, so while Ripley possessed few Xenomorph characteristics, the Queen Chestburster possessed some human characteristics. Because the moment Ripley died, the Chestburster had not left her body, the Ripley 8 clone also developed a Xenomorph Queen Chestburster. The USM scientists extract this embryo, raise her in captivity, collect her eggs, and they keep Ripley 8 alive so that she could be further studied. Coming to the Queen, she developed some human features such as a uterus, which allowed her to have a secondary reproductive process, in contrast to the egg laying that all other queens do. Of course, the development of the uterus was because of the flow of human DNA into her from Ripley, and further contamination and mutation of the same because of repeated splicing. It wasn't before long that this Queen gave birth to the star of our video, Mr. Ugly as Hell Newborn, who had the characteristics of both humans and xenomorphs. The creature did not accept the alien queen as its mother and killed her. After this, it went straight to his jolly good grandmother, Ms. Ripley 8. But it soon tasted its own medicine because Ripley 8 did her thing, you know, the whole, let's blow the aliens into the space thing. Poor guy. Having said that, I have a theory that the newborn is actually the direct child of Ripley. I will discuss it in a later entry, but for now, let's explore how exactly it received its mutations. How did the newborn get mutated? As I was saying, the newborn was the result of Ripley and the Queen's DNAs getting all mixed up. At some point, the Queen stopped laying eggs and gave birth to the newborn, much like a mammal. The newborn was born nearly fully developed, but we cannot be certain because it lived only for an hour. In fact, we don't even know if it could have been tamed into being a non-aggressive creature because it died well before it could receive any nurture or care. You see, the creature had a childlike curiosity and considered Ripley 8 its mother. It got mutated in the Queen's Queen's womb and got human features, but after its birth it started to display more human characteristics. But just how intelligent? And was it more intelligent than its pure breed brethren? Hey, this got me thinking. The newborn was basically a bastard xenomorph. Never thought I would say that sentence. Anyway, let's jump to the next entry. Does the newborn xenomorph exhibit signs of increased intelligence compared to other xenomorphs? Before I speak about its intelligence, let me tell you what kind of emotions it felt. So, the pale monster displayed a range of basic emotions, which is not really expected of a xenomorph, but is expected from a human baby. I believe this is the greatest point of difference between xenomorphs and the newborn. Its brain was developed enough to perceive and experience feelings and emotions like sorrow, rage, affection, anger, as well as curiosity. And remember, it all happened in about an hour that it lived. Since it was much like a human, it could have become increasingly intelligent. I mean, we humans develop our brains and cognitive abilities as we grow older, right? And a one-hour-old child is just a ball of cuteness, but really, really dumb. No offense to any new parents watching the video. The point is, it was definitely more emotionally intelligent than regular xenomorphs. And because of its ability to analyze things with curiosity, it was more intelligent, in the general sense of the term, than regular xenomorphs. But it was not all Einstein. The newborn 
newborn, despite its emotional capacity, was extremely immature and childlike as far as its behavior is concerned. Say if it killed someone and it killed very violently, it would toy with the bloody remains of its victim, as if it did not understand what it just did. This sort of behavior is also witnessed in some human children who don't fully understand the gravity and repercussions of their actions because of just how young they are. How does the newborn's mix of male and female traits affect its ability to reproduce? Can it reproduce on its own, or does it need another? Now this one is a bit tricky. You see, the movie does not show that the newborn has any male or female traits. Jean-Pierre Junet, the film's director, was hell-bent on giving the newborn genitalia, that too, both male and female. However, Fox was not very keen on the idea, and later even the director felt that he was going a bit overboard. In fact, he was later heard saying, even for a Frenchman, it's too much. Therefore, they digitally removed the genitalia in post-production. Anyway, the fact that the director imagined and gave both genitalia to the newborn means that it could have reproduced on its own and would not have needed a Ms. Ugly hybrid to make babies. I almost wish that I need to know what would have happened to the newborn if it continued to live. No, I am not saying I wanted to watch it have sex, but, you know, it would have been interesting to know how something of this kind reproduces. How does the corrosive acid blood of the newborn compare to the acid blood of other alien variants? Well, the blood of the newborn is not acidic, or let's just say that we do not know if its blood is acidic or not. The only scene where we see its red blood is just before its death when Ripley 8 creates a hole in the window separating the space's vacuum and USM Auriga. The newborn gets sucked out of that 2-3 inch radius circular hole into bits and pieces. Weird stuff. So yeah, the newborn shows a variation in its blood's corrosive capabilities. But how does regular xenomorph blood work? The xenomorphs use their very blood as a corrosive defensive shield. Now let's talk composition. The exact composition of xenomorph blood remains a topic of much debate, and its extreme corrosiveness makes these biomechanical creatures incredibly difficult to kill. Some speculate it might be sulfuric acid or hydrofluoric acid, but the truth is, we're still in the realm of theories. The blood itself is a dull yellow, sometimes tinged with hints of green. While it's undeniably a powerful corrosive agent, it tends to oxidize quickly when exposed to air, which occasionally reduces its destructive potential. But does this lethal blood affect the xenomorphs themselves? There are those who believe that xenomorphs are immune to their own acidic blood, possibly due to some kind of biometallic adaptation. Another theory suggests that their blood could be a heavy fluorine-based compound, which might explain its explosive reaction when exposed to fire. LaSalle Bionational, an in-universe research firm, has made groundbreaking discoveries about xenomorph blood. They propose that this acid isn't just a weapon for offense and defense. Instead, it could function as a biological battery, generating bioelectric charge through a mysterious chemical process. This theory gains credibility considering that xenomorphs don't seem to rely on traditional respiration or digestion. By tapping into this energy source, the creatures gain the stamina to survive even in the vacuum of space. This bioelectric charge might also explain the prolonged dormancy of ovomorphs. How do these eerie eggs stay viable for such extended periods? The the answer could lie in the energy provided by this liquid battery, keeping them alive and ready to hatch for ages. Is the newborn Ripley's child? In Alien Resurrection, the newborn is birthed by the Xenomorph Queen thanks to the human reproductive system she inherited from Ripley, a trait passed on during the cloning process, as Dr. Gediman explains. But there's another line from Gediman that is very intriguing and was brought up by a Reddit user. Dr. Gediman says, She is giving birth for you, Ripley. So what if the newborn is actually a genetic mutation of a child conceived by the original Ripley and Clemens on Fiorina 161? During Alien 3, Ripley was impregnated with a xenomorph, and it's possible that the queen somehow inherited this child during the cloning process. This could explain why the newborn recognizes Ripley as its mother, rather than the xenomorph queen that just gave birth to it. The queen, in this theory, isn't just giving birth to another xenomorph hybrid, but to a being that carries a part of Ripley's original humanity, a child she never knew she had. This could also explain the newborn's unique characteristics and its emotional connection to Ripley, seeing her as its true mother, rather than the queen who merely facilitated its birth. What do you think? A bit too far-fetched? I mean, we have had instances in Ridley Scott's later prequels and even in Alien Romulus where pregnancies went haywire. Speaking of Alien Romulus, you should definitely check out our video on the anatomy of the offspring from Alien Romulus.
Does the newborn xenomorph have a final form? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the newborn died too early, way too early, so we do not really know what its final form would have been like, but I am sure there must have been certain changes. In fact, the concept art of the beast had given it a long tail, much like a xeno. If we compare it with the offspring from alien Romulus, even that hybrid developed a tail sometime after its birth. So, yeah, the newborn will have had a final form, we just don't know what would have looked like. What abilities and weaknesses does newborn have? The newborn's physical appearance was strikingly more humanoid than any other xenomorph seen before. Unlike typical xenomorphs, its birth was the result of a live process, completely bypassing the usual ovomorph, facehugger, and chestburster stages. This unique origin also resulted in a radically different physical form, standing nearly twice the size of a standard warrior and far stronger. While the newborn retained the elongated skull characteristic of xenomorphs, its head was much shorter and more human-like, merging seamlessly with its upper back. The creature's face was distinctly human, featuring eyes, a nose, and a mouth at the front. In fact, many of the typical xenomorph traits were completely absent. The newborn had no tail, no inner jaw, and no dorsal tubes. Its skin was pale and fleshy, lacking the biomechanical appearance typically associated with xenomorphs. The creature's teeth were also more human-like, though the large fangs remained somewhat similar in shape to those of its xenomorph relatives. The newborn adopted an upright bipedal stance, further emphasizing its eerie blend of human and xenomorph features. What was the newborn originally going to look like? The newborn creature that Joss Whedon originally envisioned for Alien Resurrection was vastly different from what eventually appeared on screen. In Whedon's script, the newborn was an eyeless, ivory-white monster with six limbs, four spider-like legs at the front, and two dog-like limbs at the rear. Its elongated alien head was lined with bulging red veins, and it featured an inner jaw, along with a pair of pincers on the sides of its head. These pincers were designed to immobilize prey while the creature drained drained its victim's blood using its inner jaw. The newborn was also intended to rival the queen in size, making it an even more formidable presence. However, Jean-Pierre Jeunet, the film's director, had a different vision for the creature. He asked Amalgamated Dynamics Inc. to emphasize the human aspects of the human-alien hybrid, steering away from the more monstrous design and creating a creature that leaned more towards humanity than its alien origins. So yeah, that was all in this one, but if you liked the video, do stick around because we have several alien franchise videos in the pipeline. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.